tell me why you decided it was so important to get 50-50 funding in this way. Well, I believe in putting your money where your mouth is. And every year, in fact, every week, we hear a long list of negative statistics about female founders, women in business, women securing financing. It's just a long list of negativity. And, and negativity, in my mind, breeds negativity. So my co-founder and I decided that we wanted to be part of change. And I wanted to have a positive statistic that I could quote when everyone asked me, why is it that only 2% of women get money from venture capital. I wanted to have something fantastically punchy to say, let's be forward looking. So look to what we can do if we really try. Is the, Absolutely. Uh, so how did this influence how you went about getting the money? Did you have to use different channels, go uh, do a different pitch? I what, did. What was it that, that changed your strategy to get that female money? I had to be very entrepreneurial, uh, just you know, slightly ironic being an entrepreneur, but typically for a business like mine, because we're, we're growing and scaling, we're not a startup, you would go to a fund and you would secure one, two, maybe three large checks and that would be a much smoother and easier process you'd only be dealing with a bucket full of people um, in order to seek out the 50 50 that I needed I really had to dig deep and seek females who were willing to write checks for enterprise software which is what my business does we power corporate alumni networks and that didn't resonate with everybody so I really had to hunt it took a little bit longer um, but I was absolutely certain as was my co-founder that we needed to do this and also as a business we preach diversity, mm. inclusion, and it shouldn't just be a buzzword. So, you know, sometimes you just have to be the change. Yeah, and, and tell us a little bit about what you think the issue is in technology, because this is, uh, the technology sector, as you say, there are all, uh, incredible sort of depressing statistics about, and in your case, I know you've cited some around founders who don't necessarily get the uh, the share of the business that maybe some of the men got at the time. You know, what, what is going wrong in tech yeah, specifically? Yeah, I mean, you know, to that point you just made, the statistic is that 13% of women get founder equity but actually they only represent 6% of the, of, of the actual shareholding. So even when women do have equity, it's just not an equitable seat at the table. And that tends to be um, pretty, pretty pervasive around most, um, most growing Is that businesses. Because not all founders are created equal and maybe... Well, you know, I believe in a world where it's about talent, not gender. That's exactly how I've operated. It's how I was brought up and it's how I have moved through, uh, you know, the corporate world. But the statistics demonstrably do not reflect a world that says that. So as much as I don't always feel it, it is demonstrably true. Mm. Women do not get given an equitable seat. Tell us about enterprise alumni then. Uh, what kind of appetite is there for, uh, this is essentially a enterprise software as you said, that helps yeah. you keep in touch with people who've left the business. Yeah, so we power the corporate alumni networks of very large enterprises. So if you think about it, all companies around the world want to protect and promote their brand and if you do that well, you can recruit better, you can sell better and, and harnessing your alumni, all those people that have left, is something that was overlooked. So that's something that we focus on um, mm. and, and we're leading on that in the market and long may it last and, and I hope that we have a ticker on your screen at some point in a few years time. Okay, you hope to, you hope to list it. <laughs> you never know but I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about it. Okay, well that would be news. <laughs> come, and, come and see us again when you do that. Um, let, uh, it is International Women's Day and we're talking to a host of women this, this morning um, about their businesses but also ask, get, trying to get a sense of what they would like to see change to get more women either into their industry or to stay in their industry, which is yes. perhaps more the question. Yes, well, I think, you know, on International Women's Day, we hear a lot of negative statistics and a lot of reports that give an insight into what's not great. And I would like us all to be very forward thinking. Um, I can think of a long list of ways that corporates can work with growing businesses. There's a natural symbiosis between the two, but there's a real hurdle when you are selling to large corporates, when you're doing, when you're part of long sales cycles that can put you out of business and when payment terms are very challenging. If I had one ask, I'd say um, we should have inclusive procurement. It's something that exists in the US. Um, public bodies there are required to spend a percentage of procure procurement on diverse uh, teams with either female founders or diverse teams. And I think that that is a great way to ensure that money gets spent on a wide variety of, of businesses when spending in large corporates.